welcome to Gen Z on Leadership. I'm Gabe Gary, and today I'm lucky to be here with Mr. Lee Hall. He is the Vice Chairman of Finance and Bylaws and the Development Director of the High School Republican Federation of Virginia. He is also a candidate for State Secretary in the High School Republican Federation of Virginia. Not only that, but he was a mock speaker and page for the Virginia House of Delegates. He has accomplished all this at the age of only 16. Thank you for being here with us today. Oh, yeah. Thank you for having me on. Great to be here. All right, uh, Mr. Hall. So I'm going to start with the first question. Um, how did you get involved with the um, High School Republicans Federation of Virginia? Well, it all started back in December, actually. One of my friends, uh, James Ruman, he's also a member, was a member. He posted on Twitter asking anyone who wants to get involved, any teenagers who wants to get involved in the Republican Party. And I responded and said, I would love to get involved. And he sent me a DM that day and got me in contact with Luke Swetnam, who's our chairman currently, Virginia. And from there, I mean, next day I was a registered member and I've been here ever since. Yeah. That's very cool. So how, so how long has that been now? Uh, about six, seven months, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So uh, what sparked your interest in the, the leadership field? Well, it all start, honestly, I'd say back in seventh grade in my uh, civics class, Okay. When before then I wanted to be an actor, but then once I got to civics, I loved government, you know, and I decided I wanted to make a difference somehow. And I'd say my teacher at the time, Miss Roberts, she was really the person who helped spark that in me. And when I, when I tried out for the page program and I ran for a speaker, that's another way that got me into leadership because that put me in the leadership position for the first time in my life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's great. Uh, did you have a mentor or uh, inspiration like uh, Mrs. Roberts, I assume? But... Yeah, Miss Roberts, she's definitely my big inspiration, like of who I've known. But I'd say my biggest inspiration in total is Miss Roberts and former President uh, Gerald Ford. Not, not many people know about him, yeah. but I believe he's the prime example of what a leader should be. He always <laughs> did what he truly thought was right, even when it didn't benefit him. I mean, and that's what ultimately caused him to lose in 1976. But he was a truly great leader and a great man, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I like uh, Gerald Ford's story because he was the the first Eagle Scout and the only Eagle Scout. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, um, are you in the, Are you in Boy Scouts too? Were you? Or... Uh, I used to be when I was younger, but I'm not. I'm not anymore. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so what tasks uh, do you do as like the development director and um, vice chairman of the finance and bylaws? Well, as development director, my main goal is to grow and expand our organization. Right now, we have seven states. And right now, my goal is I'm focusing on adding a new state in each region. And right now, I'm focusing on Maine, Kentucky, Kansas, and Arizona, and a personal one of mine is I want to try to get one started up in Vermont. That's mm. that's it, that one's gonna be a little bit more difficult, but that's a personal thing that I want to try to get one started up there yeah. in Vermont. Yeah, that'll be good. Uh, oh, wait, yeah. How long has that? How long has it about, been around the federation? Oh, uh, the federation. Well, in total, the the national one has been around for about two years. I want to say, but I've all, I've only been involved for about seven eight months. You know. But we've definitely grown a lot as an organization. Our biggest states are Virginia, my state, and New Jersey. Those are two of our biggest states. That's great. Yeah. That's good that you guys are expanding. That's fast to get seven states. Oh, yeah. It's, it's definitely a hard process, but, I mean, it's definitely worth it. Because, I mean, our goal is personally, as development director, by the time I graduate, so in two years, I want to have at least – 25 is my goal. It's a long shot, but shoot, shoot for the stars always, and you'll maybe get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, along with, uh, so what, what qualities should a good leader possess? In my opinion, a good leader should always have courage. Courage is one of the biggest, but also be able to make the tough decisions because a true leader is always going to be faced with tough decisions they don't want to make. But that's, one of the biggest qualities of a good leader, being able to do that. And whoever you're leading, be a friend. Be someone that they can reach out for. Be a leader, but also be someone who they can come out for for help. Mm, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so 
so again, with like the courage and so what challenges have you uh, faced uh, with the Federation and like, how did you overcome them through your leadership like skills? Well, I would honestly say my first leadership challenge was before the Federation. It was actually in the paid program, I'd say. When I was first elected speaker, they let us know. They let me and Naomi, who was elected clerk, you know, mm -hmm. they let us know that they wouldn't have head pages this year. So we would have the job of being a speaker and a head page in one. Wow. And we had about 43 people. This is my freshman year, so I was 14. And my main, what we had to do is we had to lead five different committees, form these committees, appoint people without, because everyone wanted to be on a committee, committee. Everyone wanted to be a chairman or a vice chairman. Everyone wanted that big position. And, but not everyone could get one. So we had to work with people on what was best for the program. And, and in the end, we were able to do it because one thing I was, I always loved being everyone's friend. And that's something that conflicted me at the time because mm -hmm. I didn't want to hurt people's feelings, you know, but what I did was I sat down and talked with them and I said, you can help a lot. I, you have a lot of great potential, but we have blah, blah, blah <laughs> picked for chairman, you right. know, and we work with them and we still use them and use their abilities to where they are not upset, you know, and that, mm. and that's, I'd say that was my first challenge. And I feel like we overcame it, you know? Yeah. 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 Management, yeah it's always different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hiring and firing people, you know, cause especially when they're all your friends. It's rough. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. So, I mean, you've already told us, but like, could you tell us more about the being the mock speaker and page? Like, what did you, what did you do like to become well, and what did you do during? As mock speaker, we actually, it's like I said, we had about five committees and we could each make one to two bills to pass through our mock session. And so what we did was, I'm proud to say mine passed 32 to um, with only eight opposition, you know? <laughs> but what we, the cool thing was we actually, during the mock session itself, it was in the House of Delegates. And we actually had the governor visit us. Wow. I actually have a picture on my phone yeah. of uh, when the governor walked in. So I was at the speaker's chair. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you can see, that's the governor, Glenn Youngkin. Yeah. And that's yeah. me up there giving him a thumbs yeah, up. Uh, wow, that's, yeah. that's so cool. You get to meet with the governor of Virginia. Wow. Oh, yeah. He's he's definitely a great guy. He's also tall, 6'8", you know. <sighs> I'd say the hardest challenge about that, though, yeah. was – when you're in a room with over 40 people who all have their own bills, they're debating on whether they think a bill is a stupid idea or whether they like a bill a lot. The mm -hmm. debate got pretty heated. And I mean, that's why they gave me a gavel. <laughs> like I even had to use it a few times because it really wow. did get heated. Wow. Um, so along with that question, uh, like with public speaking, uh, how do you how do you handle a large group of people and how do you stay calm? Well, I actually this doesn't come from a lot of people, but I love public speaking. Like I, I do a forensics, which is a, mm -hmm. so it's different speech categories. I do extemp, which is, they give me a broad range of categories. Like for instance, uh, one of them was indigenous people and I had to collect research and I had to collect news articles on indigenous people. And when I got to the competition, they gave me, a topic and I had to give a speech about it that related to indigenous people with only the research I had. And I'd, uh, and that was at stake. So it, the nerves were on then, but yeah, the public speaking is one of those things that it's so hard to work your way up to, but once you break the ice and once you get up there, it's something that you start to love in my opinion, you know, like once you can get that confidence bit built up in yourself, you can like arouse confidence in the people around you. It's good. Yeah. Were you, are you in like a debate team at your, at your high school too? Well, we don't have a debate team currently, but I'm in the process. I'm trying to get one started up this year, actually, because some of our neighboring schools have one and I'm trying to get one started up here, but our closest thing is definitely uh forensics. That's definitely our closest thing we have to it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, um, Okay, so this one. So what advice do you have for people wanting to go into the leadership field, but specifically the, the Federation and just getting started with that? Well, anyone who wants to join the Federation, especially if your state doesn't have a chapter started up yet, as a majority don't, of course, mm -hmm. don't be afraid. You know that, 
like reach out. You could reach out to me. You could reach out to Michael, our chairman. You could reach out to anyone, even on Twitter, you know, at some people and ask. And never be afraid to be the one to start something up because everything has to have a founder. Everything has to have a creator. Every book has to have an author, you know, and history has to be written by someone. And so anyone who wants to do something new, wants to start up something new, don't be afraid. Do it. Go for it. If it doesn't go good the first time, do it a second time. That's, that's great advice for that. Um, so what path? I mean, you already have uh, a ton of leadership experience at six, only 16. But what path do you uh, could see yourself following like in college and, and onward? Well, in college, I want to go for my uh, law degree. You know, I want to try to go for law. And my hope one day is once I graduate to run for public office, you know, right. and my main goal is to do whatever I can to help the people around me and to help better the country. Cause I want, I want to leave this country a better place than we all found, it, you know? And I believe with a new generation, like us, you know, our generation mm -hmm. of leaders will make that happen. Cause it can never be one person. Definitely. Yeah. So do you, do you want to major in poli sci as well? Or is that. So I plan on for my uh, undergrad, I plan on uh, going for instead of pre-law because ironically, most of the lawyers I've talked to, they say pre-law is actually not a good thing to go for if you're going into law. And that's something I never would have thought of, but I plan on going into poli sci. Then once I, get my poli sci degree going into law school then okay. yeah that's cool um so we're a little short but is there any questions that uh you think we should ask or you want to share with us any any words uh, on? i think you really covered everything and i just wanted to say thank you for having me on i mean i've loved this you know yeah it's it's great to talk with other people in oh, leadership yeah. in our generation yeah it's, it's great oh yeah i mean especially Nowadays, my opinion, I believe, and this is something, I mean, during COVID, I mean, in our generation, public speaking has become, public speaking and leadership has become something that so many people are scared of now or worried to get into. And I believe step by step, if we can make that the norm, if we could make it the status quo, make leadership, going into leadership, public speaking more normal and I believe less people will be nervous, will be less scared, you know, and will encourage and will cause the country to flourish, you know, the more leaders we have. Yeah. Uh, I have another question. What, how do you think we should go about this? Like in school or like what, what more classes, what more education could we give to our generation to be more interested and intrigued with leadership? Well, in all honesty, I believe debate, debate teams should be all across the country, competitive debate teams too. And my class, I don't know how many other schools have this, but we have a journalism class. Mm -hmm. And because we have a school news every morning that runs That's and it helps cool. get people warmed up, you know? Mm -hmm. In journalism class, it's such a fun class. It allows you to practice your public speaking while having fun and while being with your friends. I believe that is a great way. Yeah, yeah, it's good. All oh, right. Yeah. I think I've covered all my questions. So, I'm oh, gonna... yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you for being here. No problem. Have a great day. Have a great rest of your day. If you enjoyed today's episode and you want to support the podcast even more, check us out at sites.google.com slash view slash Gen Z on leadership. To support our podcast even more, Follow us on Instagram at Gen Z on Leadership and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Gen Z on Leadership. As always, stay tuned for all new episodes. We try to post two to three a month.